Karate Club. Ah, uh, good evening, kids. Dr. Freedom here with you. Time for some Dr. Who news. Whew. It has been an incredible 48 hours for me. Um, yesterday, I got to sit down and have a chat with the lovely Lisa Bowerman, and she was just so kind-hearted, so nice, and just very easygoing, very easy to chat with. And it's just nice to get, you know, sit down and talk with someone that you've, you know, listened to on audio for quite a while. Um, I have listened to every single one of the Bernice Summerfield stories, going all the way back to Series 1. You see, I used to work a job, well, I'm still working for the same company, but back when I was at that other plant, you were doing 10-hour days, and I would pop in, you know, the Bernie Summerfield adventures and just listen, you know, let them run um, as many as I could get on my phone. And it's just so incredible to get to talk to someone, you know, you, you've listened to, you know, perform that character and also, you know, learn a lot more about them, a lot more, you know, the, 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 all the things they've been doing, you know, with Big Finish since almost, the, you know, back in the beginning. And today I got to sit down and, you know, well, this evening more accurately, I got to sit down and talk with Daphne Ashbrook. And a lot of people, of course, remember her from, you know, the 1996 Doctor Who movie, you know, where she played Dr. Grace Holloway. And unfortunately, that character is still locked up in limbo. They have no idea who owns the rights to that particular character. Um, they already know that, you know, the, the writer of the story and all that does not have the rights to the character. Same thing with uh, Lee Chang, who was played by Yi Ji So. So they've appeared in Big Finish in other roles. Um, uh, some of the you know, unit style adventures like Tales from the Vault, Mastermind, and of course the Screaming Skull. And I just you know would love that one of these days if they could find out you know just what's going on with this. But you know Big Finish has a limited budget. You know they they barely recover what money you know they do from sales. You know to bring you this incredible entertainment. So. You know, it's very, very, you know, demanding for them, you know, to actually go out and perform this, you know, long legal process to find this out. Um, also, the you know, Daphne, like I said, amazing, incredibly easy to talk to, incredibly fun. Uh, you know, if you've listened to the interview, she, she's very lighthearted, but at the same time, she's very serious and very dedicated to the craft she has chosen. And I, I just was so amazed you know, and just learning all these th new things about, you know, her life, her you know, and her acting career, which goes all the way back to the time she was six years old. And also, when if you go to her website or if you just look her up on, you know, look her up on even Wiki. Who darn! I said I had to take a deep breath there because she has an acting career between TV, movies, film, and whatnot, and stage going, you know incredible variety of characters, incredible variety of programming she's done. And it, you know, I literally had to cram for that one because it got put together literally, you know, at the last moment. And I don't regret it for an instant. It was just in such an incredible time. He's sitting there getting to talk with her as well. Oh man, it's just been an incredible journey this year. Um, I never thought that it would go this far. You know, we, we've just in this year, we've talked to, you know, Simon Fisher Becker, um, Sophie Aldred, which blew me away, Chase Masterson, you know, and now, now we also have Lisa Bowerman and Daphne Ashbrook that we've talked to as well. And I cannot thank my friend Matt Rose enough. I really can't. He has been a force of nature ever since I put him in charge of the Omega Files Twitter page, which if you want to go visit it, it's the link to it is below in the description box. And he's just done an amazing job going out and getting a hold of these actors because a lot of the time he, he's the one who makes the first contact and I'm the one who just haggles, you know, to get it put together. So, you know, I'm the guy who just gets the scheduling done and all that. And, you know, decide, we sit down and arrange what time, you know, how much time we have and whatnot. And I just cannot thank him enough. He's just been incredible. He's done an amazing job for the Omega Files and for me as well. I, I just cannot thank him enough. I, you know, whew, whew, whew. like I said, it's just amazing amazing time now uh, he's really gone the extra mile i cannot praise him enough okay but let's get into what we're looking at let's take a look now first off in case you don't find what you need from the daphne ashford video down in the description you know on the description box there this popped up earlier tonight 
uh, TV corner, corner interview, Daphne Ashbrook, actor, you know, Doctor Who. Um, if you go through this article, or here's, you know, their link to uh, their article, you know, their, sorry, their interview on Vimeo. But also there's a link here to the Indigo campaign for Once More with Feeling. So if you want to go take a look at this, you know, maybe decide if you're going to donate some money for, for the movie. Um, as she said, they're already at 10000 I think they need like 15000 to achieve their goal. And, you know, I, you know, I know she'd really appreciate it if you helped them out over there. So if you didn't find any of that information on the Once More We're Feeling Facebook site or through Daphne Ashbrook's web, you know, her webpage, you can just click right here on this link on this article, and it will take you right to that Indiegogo page. And bam, you're in business. Okay, let's keep moving. Big news, and this was not a surprise, because word of this had been drifting around. You know, I talked about this a while back, that director Rachel Tullalay, who helmed last year's Dark Water Death in Heaven finale for Doctor Who Series 8, has now been confirmed on Twitter that she is returning to the series to direct this year's a yet unnamed two-part Doctor Who finale. All right, quote, recovering from a case of the silence, Doctor Who, I am so fortunate to be asked back for the finale of season nine. So we can only assume she's directing both episodes, you know, especially if she's talking finale. And of course, most of the season appears to have been two parters. So wham, bam, she's definitely probably going to be doing both parts. As a matter of fact, they've already got her down right here. So this is the list right here that of the information we have so far. Thanks to Doctor Who News, they've got it all right here. Nice sniffy little chart. Director, writer. Um, episode nine, we're thinking might be Mark Gatiss's. But, you know, right here, but that's not been confirmed as yet. Also, we don't have a director name for that one yet. So, oh, forgive me if I take another deep breath. Man. It's just been an amazing 48 hours for me. It's just been so exciting. Okay, so Rachel Tullalay, as a matter of fact, that's a picture of her on set. Matter of fact, let's, um, we're thinking, you know, I'm glad I remembered that. Um, hang on a second. Um, dummy me. Um, I forgot to go back and bring up the Doctor Who filming pictures. And there were not a whole lot of them for this particular See, Hang on, let me go ahead and stop this. See, this is what I get. <laughs> He's such an amazing guy. <laughs> okay, let's take a look real quick. Now, they were once again at Caffili Castle today. Um, once again, that's, you know, Rachel Tullalay, you know, right there, Man in the Bridge. Um there's Capaldi. Now you got it. Now picture this. He is in that full blown suit. And if you guys have been keeping an eye on the weather over in the UK, it was sweltering. He had to have been baking in that thing. But there he is, calm, cool, collected, and working. Okay, here's some more pictures of lighting rigs and whatnot. Luckily, they were mainly shooting inside today, as you can see there, you know, doing the lighting for the. That guy there in that conference room, I don't know where that picture is from. I forgot. I think it's from that world tour. Um, as uh, Adam Warford showed earlier, this is one of the uh, drones they use for overhead shooting. Um, also, here's a little shooting along among, or alongside the moat. Um, also, I think someone brought up, I think this doorway was used in Vampires of Venice. And once again, here's the lighting rigs again. Oh, looky, trucks. And here's Capaldi going, that AC had better be on in that car. That AC had better be on in that car. Right. Okay, some more shots from the courtyard. And here they were getting ready um, yesterday, you all starting to get set up. And that's about all I got on that front. See, normally I would show those right off the bat, and then Dummy Me forgot them. So, you know, if you want to look around on Twitter, be sure to go check the um, hashtag DWSR. You can probably find most of these photos for yourself right there. Okay, let's get back to business, shall we? Okay, so Rachel Tullalay is directing the finale. That's now locked in. That's confirmed. All right, let's move on. Okay, 12th Doctor number nine. To, uh, matter of fact, Wednesday, which was officially going to be yesterday by the time you all get this video, we'll see the, it's all the release of Doctor of the 12th Doctor number nine by Robbie Morrison. Um, as you can tell, um, if you take a look at this photo here, if I remember, oh, yes, and uh, I think someone had um, the uh, other cover for this one. But okay, and if you want, here's a preview. You can take go click on these, take a look. 
Wham Bam, look at that. The Sands, Frankie Seneca, The Wolf Pack, Dino Martinelli. Come on. <laughs> so it looks like they're visiting a Las Vegas style type deal here. I haven't been keeping up on the comics, but I figure I'll report this for you guys in case you are. All right. Moving right along. Sorry, I'm sorry. I thought I missed an article. Um, Sophie Aldred was at Indie PopCon, and this is a nice, cute little report that she gave for the Strangeness in Space website. Sorry about that. Darn you. See, earlier this was working this way. We'll do this the manual way. There we go. That's a lot better, ain't it? <laughs> and, of course, there she is with the infamous baseball bat of justice. Okay. And this is some shots here. Also, she gives a very, very nice report of her time at the con. Um, I read it over briefly. It's just, you know, it's nice to see she's in, you know, enjoyed her time there. And if you run down here, there's some nice pics down here with um, a couple of kitties dressed up as Ace. And also there was a group shot here. It doesn't get much bigger than this one, unfortunately. Uh, this is a very small pic, even when you click on it. But... You know, nice cute time had over there at any popcom by Sophie Aldrin. Also, if you've missed anything, if there's any articles you want to go back and look for or other things you might have missed, boom, right here, news roundup on uh, Block or Who. Um, he's already got all these articles. There's merchandise, uh, some reviews, miscellaneous, uh, other articles that have popped up over the course of the you know, past few weeks. So in case you've missed any of them, bam, here they are. You can just go back and get yourself caught up if you want to go take a look at what's been going on for the last couple of weeks. Okay, so, <laughs> oh, man, I feel like I've been emotionally drained, but at the same time, I'm so excited. It's just been an incredible journey this year, and it's still going on. Matter of fact, Monday, because coming Monday, we're going to have the, um, the Q&A with Sophie Aldred. I still have to get back with Chase for hers. Um, I also have to get back with Lisa Bowerman. You know, see, that one's going to be tricky to schedule because if I don't get that done within the next week or so, I don't know when it's going to get done because she's only available during certain times of the week. And, it, you know, I have I have a job I have to go to as well, and I can't use up all my sick days for Q&As. Oh, man, just been an incredible, incredible time this year. And I, I, I know sometimes, you know, he feels a little bit underappreciated, but – if you know, if you ever see Matt Rose out there on Facebook or you see him on Twitter, give him a round of applause. Really, give him a standing ovation. He has gone the extra mile for the Omega Files this year. He has done incredibly well. I am so glad he's on my side um, out there. You know, making these contacts and all that. And there's going to be more to come as this year goes. Uh, matter of fact, I have to sit down and write a bunch of emails over the course of this week because there's a lot more stars we're going to contact. And we're going to sit down and hopefully have a chat with them the way we've been doing. But if you haven't watched it yet, the Daphne Ashbrook interviews online, same thing with Lisa Bowerman. They're right here on this channel. Should be easy to find. Well, guys, I'm going to get on out of here, take a deep breath, and relax, relax, relax until tomorrow. So until now, oh, yeah, remember, keep in mind there will be no Omega Files this weekend. That's because Saturday is July 4th, which is Independence Day. I'm just going to take this weekend off, relax, take it easy, and <sighs> maybe even get a nap or two on the porch, I think, you know, especially if it cools down enough. Okay, so until next time, folks, take it easy. Have a good one. Have a safe and happy weekend. See you all tomorrow.